that's you know I was thinking last night it's like how many songs you have to write before you can actually write one of those you know <laughs> one of those that actually pay the bills right because yeah. we probably have some musicians here right yeah all right, all right. anybody in bands right is it hard or what it ain't easy is it yeah it ain't easy so um you know, and um, and I guess we should do a, we should do the poll. So yeah, let's, let's do. The poll. The poll. All right, Chris, you poll. All right, all right. So first of all, how many drummers? Yeah. Drummer right there, right there, right there. Nice, nice. All right, bass players. Wow, they all they're all hanging out in the back. All in the back. They know they know the bass frequency carries, so they're gonna hear the bass. Bass is sounding great back there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what about uh, guitarists? Yeah. yeah. All here to see you. Cool. <laughs> I'm Chris's bass player tonight. Uh, yeah. I'm used to it. That's okay. That's all right. uh, you know, it's funny with that tune. You know, one of the things that um, you know, Chris has a four-year music degree, so we default to him for actual technical expertise and actually explaining things, right? So uh, if you need to ask exact musical things, he's the guy to go to. But you know, just. There's a, it's funny, playing that song, there's a lot going on. You know, one of the things is I notice, like, well, girls seem to like it, right? Because yeah. they're bobbing their heads, right? And that's cool. <laughs> right? A metal song that chicks like is very hard, right? Yeah. We happen to do one, I guess. But um, but part of it is just the groove, you know? And, and, and writing a song that's, that just everybody, as soon as they hear it, they can obviously, the lyric is important. Um, because, and that's one thing a lot of us musicians are very, we do a very poor job of, is we get so into our fingerboards and our fretboards and our licks and our chops that we totally forget about the singer, which is when you turn on the radio, what do you usually listen to? The singer, yeah. right? So that's probably lesson, music lesson 101, but also just the groove, you know, and that's probably my job is just kind of like, you know, playing something that, that, that grooves. And one of the things, there's even a piece of that tune where it breaks down to like halftime, right? Because the regular, most of it is, right? And then there's the, then there's the you know, the the uh, second part of the of the chorus where it breaks to halftime, right? Where the, the drums break down to halftime. And usually, I find that if I want to make something feel good, I usually start internally counting at halftime, right? So Real you quickly, can be playing, uh, Dave Ellison, beatbox master, right there. Yeah. It's kind of part of the bass player's job, you know, especially in a metal band, metal band, because it usually starts with a riff, right? Right? Okay. Which is a little stark by itself, and then the drums kick in, right? And then my job is to kind of try to make that fit together so that it that it becomes something more in grooves. See, your heads are bobbing. Right? That, that's my job. Get your heads bobbing, or your heads banging, or your feet tapping, whatever that is. And and um, so that you know, just kind of from the fundamental of the tune, you know, to take something that starts out really simple to try to kind of glue all that together. And Chris, you got some. Malarkey. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I want to first illustrate really how he kind of sets up that driving rhythm because uh, that that really is what keeps that thing moving forward for me. Let's do. Uh, let's do it like. Maybe uh, two times through you playing my line exactly, okay. and let's just see how that feels. And then you add in your normal, okay. your, your normal bass line. <laughs> now the driving bass line. Uh, and that, that's kind of exactly what it, and usually, and story told that when the song started, that is how it started. You know, as, as Dave picked up his guitar, the, that riff kind of fell off of his fingerboard, you know, and it was like, wow, that's a cool riff, and the drums kick in, and we're kind of figuring out what to do. And, and so I just started playing along, and then came the second development of that, which is really where, you know, there's, there's a saying in pop music, don't bore us, get to the chorus. <laughs> <laughs> Like that. Now, yeah, yeah, but, but in, uh, in, uh, in metal music, you know, we're all in the riff, and that's what we like, right? We love a good riff, and then the fact that it repeats and stuff. But as you're heading toward the chorus, it's time to kind of break away and do some melodic things. And, and I notice one thing that I do when we do double choruses, I usually play the first part of it down lower, 
And then the second part of it, I move up an octave. And I do that, you know, in, it's kind of just a way to create some energy uh, from, the, from the bottom. But maybe we can play through that chorus just to show, because the, the original line that Dave came up with was the descending guitar part, and then underneath of it, I, I had this thought to kind of go against it. So as he's going down, I'm going up, and we actually meet at one point in the middle, and so it's much better. Yeah, So then it kind of created this kind of melodic counterpoint that, uh, that, that all of a sudden there's something kind of moving up and then there's the vocal line and then of course there's a harmony vocal. So there's all kinds of little simple things going on in there. And um, you know, I guess the Beatles and some people like that taught us that simplicity is great, right? Because you can, it's easy to, to, to sift through. So uh, that's, there's our Beatles tune actually. Symphony of Destruction, right? <laughs> yeah. A little love song. <laughs> I don't know, um, how many of you are really into the theory side of things? You guys, you right there, you right there, nice, nice. A quick explanation of kind of what's happening is, you know, even though we're playing a different line, he's ascending and, and I'm descending, uh, it's all part of the same chord family, so from those tones. So if we play just the first note, obviously we get a nice, very tonal sounding E minor is what it would be in the key, and then as he ascends up to his next note, I love that sound. That's uh, an F sharp dominant chord, so it's leading onward. But they're they're all part of the the same chord. And then when we move to the next one, and that's just the G major nine, so add nine actually. So and it continues to move through there. So all of those chords are actually, even though we're not playing the exact same note, it's part of the same chord, so it sounds good. 